morning, everybody, and thank you. Uh, so today we're presenting a technology, which is a novel laparoscopic device used for ureter identification, um, ideally used for minimally invasive cases, but can be expanded beyond that. For disclosures, I am the founder and CEO of the company that we're using to move this technology forward uh, that was developed here in the Texas Medical Center. So we're all aware of iatrogenic ureteral injury, the risks, the incidents, and all the major factors that influence the uh, this really devastating issue. So annual caseloads of physicians that perform these types of cases, their level of training if they're minimally invasively certified, if they have done robotic cases, and also surgical approaches. So MIS versus robotic versus open cases. And on the bottom part of the slide here, you can see uh, some of the peer-reviewed articles that show the incidences of this issue in a large volume procedures performed across the United States. So looking at the numbers, there's about 3 million cases done each year in the United States alone that require identification of a ureter at some point during the operation. With an incidence across the board about 1 to 2 percent and at a complication cost at about $54,000 per incident, this translates to about $3.2 billion burden to the healthcare industry in the United States alone. So it's a big problem. There's a number of approaches that we all use right now. So we can have our urologist colleagues come in at the beginning of the case place ureteral stents and hopefully assist us in uh, protecting the ureter, but we all know this doesn't actually decrease the incidence of injury and it takes a lot of additional time. You have to coordinate with the urologist, a second uh, tray needs to be set up, the patient needs to be draped twice, and there's also a cost incurred for a uh, ureteral stent placement. Our other option that most of us do is spending our time dissecting in the different planes, looking for the ureter, uh, and this in some cases can take up to 30 or 40 percent of the operation just trying to identify the structure before we can even move forward. And this dissection alone risks the very, uh, risks injury of the very structure we're trying to protect as well. Advanced technologies, of course, developed. Uh, lighted ureteral stents have been around, but these have a lot of the same issues as standard ureteral stents. Somebody else needs to place them for us. And there's also issues of workflow interruption. We have to turn down the light in our scope just to be able to see this dim glow and then turn them back up to keep on with our operation. Technologies such as SPY or Pinpoint are really fascinating uh, approaches, but it's expensive. $200,000 for the device, uh, $1,000 per case use, and requires an injection of a chemical. And because we want to try to use this stuff in high volume procedures, it's really not scalable because of these costs. So what we're presenting is a paradigm shift in how you identify the ureter in a laparoscopic case or even open cases. We create a device that is battery powered, it's handheld, it's single use, and with a single push button, it generates a safe electrical stimulus at the tip of the device that generates a full length peristaltic contraction in the ureter, leveraging natural physiology uh, without uh, having to do extensive dissection into the retroperitoneal space. Uh, and the most important part for us, and when we talk to other surgeons, is that this fits seamlessly into the natural workflow of the physician. You use it just like every other device that's on the back table. It's not tethered to anything. And with a single push button, it's super easy to use and understand. As such, if we compare it to some of the more common techniques being used right now, you can see it has a much better safety profile. The stimulation is a low power uh, electrical stimulus. So there's no risk for injury from that perspective. It doesn't require any preoperative procedures, no indwelling foreign objects like ureteral stents and it's extremely easy to use as a single push button. So videos are always great. Here's a brief video showing us using the device in a uh, porcine model here. And so without even violating that retroperitoneum or entering that space, an electrical stimulus can be used to generate a full length contraction of the ureter. If you don't know exactly where it is, you can just use our device, kind of scan across that posterior peritoneum. And once you reach a point where you're triggering it, you get that contraction, you see where it is, you can move on with your operation really quickly and safely. Of course, a lot of clinical advantages, right? We can decrease OR time uh, by having a rapid and increased uh, time to ureter visualization. Uh, we can decrease the ureter injury risk uh, to patients during the procedures. And as such, it fits perfectly into the evolving value-based healthcare trends that exist in the United States today. We want to break down dollar values. We're trying to keep our costs low, especially compared to things such as preoperative stents, which the product itself costs $400 to $600 on top of the uh, other ancillary fees. So we're trying to eliminate all those things and 
provide something that is potentially superior. So we're moving this product forward as fast as we can right now in a safe fashion, of course, and we're hoping uh, to be on track to clear FDA uh, by the fourth quarter of next year. So we want to get this back into the hands of physicians and back into the operating rooms where I had come up with this idea. Uh, we've already identified a large academic institution for our pilot site studies and our first in man work with the uh, entire buy-in of the OBGYN department. And we're also trying to pair this with other technologies such as uh, real-time computer vision and image recognition so that we can have a visual overlay that traces the path of the ureter so you don't need to visually remember exactly where it is as you do your case. There's of course a lot of expanded surgical applications for our technology uh, by doing different types of smooth muscle stimulation and identification in other parts of the body or other parts of the abdomen. And we can also integrate this technology into other existing systems and other devices that we already use in the operating room. So really we're hoping to have a technology that benefits everybody involved. Patients of course benefit, surgeons have the capability now to uh, enhance their operative experience and staff and the uh, hospital administration like it because of the uh, increased efficiency and decreased OR time. And here's some of the quotes from different physicians from around the US and around the world uh, and their feedback and thoughts on this technology. In closing, I just wanna thank a lot of the individuals that uh, helped uh, guide this project and uh, uh, guided the, uh, the clinical decisions and some of the uh, work that we have been doing on here, including Brian Duncan, Don Gonzalez, uh, Mirasani, Barbara Bass, uh, and I want to have a special acknowledgement for my uh, personal mentor and our program director at Methodist, uh, Dr. Sherilyn Gordon Burroughs. Thank you very much for your time. Happy to take any questions.